to Switzerland and worked with me on that trophy program that I just mentioned. <coughs> a partner to work with, um, you know, as we look at uh, destination marketing organizations that support a global destination, Switzerland is among the very best. Uh, and so Caroline will give you a great uh, you know, lead into what is available in Switzerland and touch some of the points that I was trying to touch on in my, my conversation. Um, truly an amazing place and a premier a, a meeting and incentive destination within Europe. So uh, take it away, Caroline, and, and thanks for, uh, for doing this for us today. And, and thanks to all you meeting planners for joining today. Well, grüezi, bonjour, buongiorno, allegra. That's how we greet you in Switzerland, in the four official languages that we have. But today we do it in, as we are in an English environment, we simply say good morning to everybody. So thank you so much, Doug, and the entire prestige team behind it for working on, on so many programs together and for making this webinar happening today. We really do appreciate everybody taking the time and logging in. And uh, what we'd like to do is take you on a virtual trip to Switzerland and until hopefully you get to go there in person. So who are we as Doug said? My name is Caroline and together here with me, I have Fabia and both of us are based here in New York City. And we've been working together with Prestige for many years and within the Prestige team, you have a lot of Swiss ambassadors yourselves. And from the chat, we see that some of you even lived in Switzerland. So, you know, use this common language and exchange what you know, and hopefully we tell you a lot of things that you don't already know. So basically, as Doug said, yeah, we are a DMO and we are funded by the government. Our aim is to have you in Switzerland and happy in Switzerland. So we're, we're here to help anybody that needs any type of Switzerland, any type of information when it comes to Switzerland. So with that in mind, I know that Fabia is very eager to tell you some information. We're going to play a little play role here so that it's it's a little more interactive and feel free to put any questions in the chat either Doug and the team or ourselves will try to answer them as we go along. Welcome everyone from my side and hello. Um, I would like to tell you the key reasons why Switzerland is the perfect location for your next program. So why choose Switzerland for your next event? Um, we are known as a very reliable country. Um, nowadays, it's quite hard to talk about safety with everything going on in the world, but we are known to be a very safe country. And we are located in the middle of Europe, so from any surrounding um, European country, it's really easy to get to Switzerland. Switzerland is a very small country, so we have very small distances between the towns, cities and villages, so it's easy, very easy accessible again. And we are a bucket list countries for many people. And there's more. As Doug mentioned, we have one, one of the most integrated public transportation system, which makes it very easy to discover Switzerland with various mode of transportation. As I mentioned, Eng English is widely spoken, so it's also easy to have a program and get by with the locals. And also we have a huge variety of landscape and cultures on a very, very more small scale, which we come to into more details. And last but not least, the excellent facilities and infrastructure, whether it's modern or traditional. So now you know some key reasons why to go to Switzerland. So we want to take you on a trip to Switzerland. So let's fly to Switzerland together. Swiss is the national airline of Switzerland and it offers weekly, weekly flights to Switzerland from any uh, North American hub but we also have many other um, airlines that offer flights from North America to Zurich or Geneva. I mentioned before that Switzerland is located in the heart of Europe, so you can see it here again and from any um, surrounding major European cities, you can actually take a train um, to Switzerland. So for example, from Paris to Zurich, it's for only four hours. So if you're located in Europe, um, you can either fly or train to Switzerland. Switzerland is a very small country, as I mentioned, and here on this map, you can see how small we actually are. So we fit 238 times into the US and three times into the state of New York, which makes the distances between the city uh, very short and easy. And now that we've told you the variety, we also like to show pictures so that for those of you who have not been yet, get to live it a little bit by pictures. So 
you can see that we can offer so much in one day. Basically, you could start your day down by the vineyards. Well, yes, we're a wine producing country. We don't really export a lot because we like to drink it ourselves. So it's less than 5% that we actually export. So from the vineyards, you can easily go to the top of a glacier by lunchtime, do some activities up there on the top. Then you can come back down, be surrounded by the lake again, mm. on trees we have in Switzerland. Or you can just go to one of our medieval cities. Here, the bottom right is actually Bern. And I just like to point out that Bern is the capital of Switzerland. It's not Zurich or it's not Geneva neither. And when it comes to venues, you know, what do we have that maybe other destinations don't have, right? Like what's unusual? So, of course, we can literally have a meeting on a train, like you can see here on that first uh, carriage, on that first picture. So it's in a carriage and you can use the transfer to go get from point A to B using the train and have your meeting, have your briefing so that when you get to the destination, you get the most out of it and you can be out there and enjoy it. If you want something more creative, you can have a camper van and do it there. If you want something more traditional, we have a lot of castles. This one here that you see is a castle style type venue in the Italian part of Switzerland. And the last one, you might think, what is this ball? Well, you use it every day, what was invented there, and it's actually the internet. It's the CERN in Geneva, and you can actually even visit it with a group. So it makes it even more interesting, up to 300 people concert style, but you can have small tours going there too. And then if you do go to Switzerland, obviously something that we would like you to experience is, is the traditions that we have. So you may know the cheese, Gruyère, that you enjoy. It actually comes from a village called Gruyère, which is right here. And you can reach it very easily by public transportation or by coach. And you can privatize the entire village for yourself, for example. You can also privatize a vineyard, just in case. So now we want to take you on a little trip through Switzerland and we are going to stop in all the major Swiss destinations and in each destination we're going to talk about the main attractions and locations. So you will either fly into Zurich or Geneva with the two international airports in Switzerland if you come from North America and we are going to start our journey in Zurich. So you may have heard of Zurich, it's the largest city in Switzerland and still a very green city, as you can see in the picture. It's located right next to the shore of Lake Zurich, and it's famous for its international companies, startups, financial district, culture offers, and also has a beautiful old town and plenty of activities to offer. And one famous activity actually is a boat tour on Lake Zurich, where you can enjoy a breakfast or dinner, for example, or you can use it as a transfer to your next uh, menu which could be the Lindt Home of Chocolate. It's a new museum, it's a chocolate museum, and there you can actually try and taste or make your own chocolate. And that's a picture here of our trophy that happened last summer, where we took the group to make their own um, Swiss chocolate. And a unique venue, for example, is uh, pri privatizing a tram in Zurich. And you can enjoy a dinner there, for example, and has this one has space for up to 20 eight people, but there are also bigger ones available for up to 100 and guests. Then we would like to introduce you the brand new um, Circle Convention Center. And this is an uh, airport venue, so it's only five minutes walk away from the airport. Um, it's still very green, as you can see in the picture, and it offers many restaurants and shops, and it has the biggest hotel of Switzerland with 550 rooms. It's the Hyatt Regency and Hyatt Place. And the convention center has space for up to 1,500 guests um, in the room. We have another convention center um, located in the city center of Zurich. So you will be right next to the lake with the uh, mountains in the background. So beautiful uh, scene, scenic views. And this has space for up to 4,500 delegates. And it has reopened in June 21, so it's brand new. Okay, so we thought we'd do a little break. We do a well, little break, little game. So we have two truths and a lie. Uh, there are basically the statements are there. We export 50% of our wine abroad. Then we invented the, invented the Swiss dish called raclette. 
and we consume an average of 26 pounds of Swiss chocolate a year. So which one do you think is a lie? Put it in the chat, just out of curiosity, trying to see if you feel like it. If not, we can move on. But we see the first one is a lie. Yes, number one, the wine export. Yes, I think you have all been listening very well. We are only exporting about 1% of Swiss wine because we love it so much. We keep it in Switzerland. Even for us, we need to travel back for the holidays mm -hmm. to go and enjoy it. <laughs> so we hope that all of you get to book Switzerland pretty so soon so that you get to enjoy it yourselves. So now from Zurich, we're moving on to Geneva. So bonjour, because in Geneva, on the western part of this map that you see here, you speak French, then you have English, uh, sorry, German on the majority of it. You have Italian just in a small part. And the fourth official language is Romance. It's only, again, 1% that speaks it, but it's still an official language. So now that we are in Geneva, you may know this iconic jet d'eau, which is what they are known for. I mean, Geneva is very cosmopolitan. It's the most international city. It has over 200 international organizations. So all depending on, you know, what type of meeting you try to plan, it might be very worth because you can also con consider visiting some of the offices or the factories that are around that area. What can you do? Well, there's a lot of things that you can do in a lot of places in Switzerland because everything is small. If you can't do it in that particular place where you're staying, we can also take the activity to you. For example, here, the watchmaking. It's a company called Initium. There's many that are doing this, but this is one that we've had very, very good experiences. You can see how a watch is being made. You can try to make a watch, but even better, you can make your own watch. So literally every delegate gets to pick what they want and walk away with their brand new Swiss watch. How cool is that? Then what we'd like to do in each place is just showcase you either a convention center or a hotel because everybody has different needs, needs whether it comes to meeting or incentive. So some may be more appropriate than others. For example, here you have the President Wilson, which has 226 rooms. It's directly down on the lake. Also for you, important to know, Geneva is the city that has the most density of five-star properties. So you have for the largest group, the largest facilities. Although Zurich has the largest hotel in the meantime, as Fabia said. If you like it smaller and other, uh, you know, more chain hotels, because you like to work with certain uh, hotel brands, we, for example, also have a Four Seasons in Geneva. It's much smaller. It has 115 rooms and it used to be the Hotel des Berges. For those of, two, of you that have known this hotel before it became um, um, Four Seasons Hotel. But now we're going to hop on one of these trains at Geneva and be on the train for 45 minutes driving through the vineyards until we get to Lausanne. Yes, here we are in Lausanne, the land of French speaking part of, part of Switzerland. And it's also the Olympic capital um, because the Olymp Olympic Committee is based in Lausanne and also the Olympic Museum. So here we have a picture how Lausanne looks like and we also call it the little San Francisco just on a smaller scale. It has these hilly and small roads like San Francisco has. Here we can see the Olympic Museum. So the Olympic Museum can be privatized as well. And it's um, conveniently located right next to the Beau Rivage Palace, which I will show you later. And it's also included in the entry is included in the Swiss travel pass, which we have mentioned. So here we can see the Lavo region. Uh, it's the UNESCO World Heritage Sites and it's the vineyards, uh, which Caroline mentioned before, where you can taste the wine that we don't export. And you can do it by different ways. So you can either go on a bike tour, you can, for the less active ones, you can discover the vineyards with a little train or you can hike through them. And that's an example how it could look like. And if you're looking for a unique experience in the Lausanne region, this could be it. So for the people who are not afraid of heights, um, a hot air balloon ride and to see the beautiful uh, sceneries of Lake Geneva with the Alps in the background. And this is the top meeting hotel in Lausanne, the Beau Rivage Palace, um, with 186 um, renovated rooms, just located at the shore of Lake Geneva with beautiful views as well. 
So now we are traveling to Montreux, waiting for Caroline. Hello, back in Montreux, just 15 minutes apart from Lausanne. So you can really do a program in either cities and visit the other one. Lausanne is more of the city, Montreux is more of a resort. And um, yes, part of that program that Doug was mentioning at the beginning, he was also very uh, lucky, I would say, to be in Switzerland exactly at the time that the Montreux Jazz Festival took place. Some of you may be familiar with, with, that, um, with that event that takes place every year. And it, it is called jazz, but it's not just about jazz. They've had like basically artists like Prince, Deep Purple, who recorded his song Smoke on the Water in Montreux because the casino was burning down at the time. Just a little bracket there. And we also had Elton John, David Bowie, uh, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, you name it. Even like uh, rappers like Stormzy were there. So it's not just jazz. It's really like a big, big music festival. And for you to know, you can actually do a, a VIP program around the Montreux Jazz Festival. So that can be something super cool. As we mentioned before, there is also the Gruyere, you know, that is very easily reachable from there. And if you like, Doug mentioned from green to eternal snow, it's very easy to get to because we have the Glacier 3000 that is easy reachable. It has a very funky suspension bridge up there. But again, if you don't want to do the heights, there's also a, a mountain roller coaster that you can use or you can just go around on the snowmobile and enjoy the, the wonderful alpine panorama from behind. And now you may think, where do you stay? Well, in Montreux, it's, it's really the one and only major hotel. There's other four star smaller hotels, but for larger groups, the Fairmont Montreux Palace is one of the top properties. It's directly on the lake. It's managed by a GM that has been there for over 20 years. And the hotel is 236 rooms and it's really like wonderful. But what else can you do around the Montreux area? So you can actually hop on a train and visit Zermatt. You may all know the Matterhorn which is actually the picture of the famous Toblerone chocolate. And there you can take a train and visit or get to see the Matterhorn from another mountain, or you can stroll um, in the city of Zermatt and enjoy a fondue or a raclette. So now we move on to the capital of Switzerland, Bern. And we actually make fun of the Bernese people because they have a really strong Swiss accent and we say they're always a bit slower. So yeah, that's a little fun fact here for you. So we are in Bern here and it's a very um, green city. It always look, almost looks like a village, even though it is a city and it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it's a perfect um, hub for day trips. But if you want to stay in Bern, it also has a lot of activities to offer. So for example, you can go on a tour to the parliament and in summer you can swim in the river. That's what the locals do. So plenty of things to offer. You all, or you may know the Hotel Victoria Jungfrau. Um, it's a leading hotel of the world and it has 216 rooms and it's in Interlaken. And from Interlaken, but also from Bern, um, you can visit the Jungfrau Joch, which is one, I would say, one of the most famous um, tourist at, um, attraction, attractions in Switzerland. It's the highest railway station in Switzerland, and it's also called Top of Europe. And it's the highest railway station in Europe, sorry. And you get to see snow all year round and also the glacier. Yes, you can see we have so much to tell you. We're super excited and, you know, like get like, yeah, excited to talk about all our own activities. So now we're back in central Switzerland and Lucerne, they call themselves pocket size Switzerland. And why is it? It's because it's right bang in the middle of Switzerland and it's so easy to experience mountain, lakes, uh, rivers, city, resort all within one day because it's so close and accessible so it's really a perfect incentive destination uh, talking about incentive what kind of hotels would there be so the Brugenstock resort is a hotel that has done renovations for 10 millions of of dollars and has opened a few years ago and is on the top of the hill. It's very, very exclusive. It has three main hotel properties, each with about 100 rooms with different style. It, one has an infinity pool and it's just stunning. 
And in that area, what you can also do, you have cable cars, like, like you may see this one here with an open deck. Yes, it's an open deck, but it also ha has a lower deck with doors. And if you don't want to go up the mountains this way, we have other ways that you can reach the top of the mountain. A very exciting latest news out of Switzerland is really the Palace Lucerne that has been closed for a few years, has literally just opened up less than two months ago and has now opened as a Mandarin Oriental. Uh, I've not had the pleasure to see it yet, but Fabia has been there last month and says it's absolutely stunning. So now from Lucerne, we only have a couple more stops to take you on our little journey. And uh, we are now going to Davos. And you may know Davos through the World Economic Forum, where all the political leaders meet always in January. So it's really like tucked away in the mountains, but yet it has all the facilities that you need. Like you can see on here, for example, you may wonder what this hotel is. And it is the Alpengold Davos. It used to be an intercontinental and has now rebranded as Alpengold. And it belongs to the same hotel chain as the Victoria Jungfrau that Fabia showed you earlier on. And in Davos, you can do lots of activities. Obviously, it's very outdoor. If you prefer something more indoor, it has the highest beer brewery in the Alpine region. So you can not just do watches or chocolate, but you can brew your own beer with making your company label, for example, too. So now we have one more stop. And guess where that could be? This is Basel, which is actually my home town or my home yeah, city and I'm happy to give you a quick introduction into Basel. It's located at the very north of Switzerland so you can visit three countries in one day. So you could go to France, Germany and Switzerland in only one day. But let's stay in Switzerland. So Basel is known for its cultural offers so plenty of museums and arts to visit in Basel and also famous for its beautiful old town. And one way to discover Basel could be by water taxi. So you can even experience a fondue on the river taxi. And you can also visit the other two countries by river taxis. Maybe many, uh, some of you are interested in architecture or, or in the architecture field. And Basel is known as the architecture capital. So there are plenty of famous architects and buildings in Basel to, and to visit. And here we have the Marriott Hotel in Basel. It just got renovated in summer, of this last summer, and it has 239 rooms to offer and nine meeting rooms. And it has a very convenient location. It's just in the city center. It's, and, and it's also under the same roof as the Basel um, convention, convention Center. So yeah, I think we ended our little journey, but we still have a few information for you. Yes, indeed. So like, like you know, like, like Fabia said, like from Basel, you can be in three countries and it's so easy to get from one place to the other within Switzerland. So what we find, like, for example, even with Basel, like if you're doing a river cruise, right, like, like we get a lot of these kind of inquiries and interests in the past too, because the river cruises end in Basel or start in Basel. So you can do a pre or a post trip and easily reach and visit Switzerland because from Basel, like you can see on the map from Basel to Zurich is one hour. If you look Zurich to Lucerne, that's another hour. Lucerne to Bern is, so it's, it's mainly kind of an hour between cities. But when you try to convert that to programs that you may run somewhere else, or, you know, even for us, like landing at JFK and then getting home, it takes us an hour to get home. I went on a trip last week. I did Colorado, Wyoming. Uh, where else was I? Idaho. I mean, but it takes so long to get from one place to the other because obviously America is so huge, right? So that's why we say Switzerland is Europe in a nutshell. But then within Switzerland, you're super, super fast. I mean, look at Lake Geneva on that map. It, it takes you an hour from one end of the lake to go to the other end. So just bear that in mind of how much you get to see and experience if you choose Switzerland as your next destination. And what we also try to encourage with this map, what we're trying to show you is if you stay four or five nights or more, we also encourage you to do a split program within Switzerland. You don't need to do two different countries because if you stay in the French and German part, you get to experience the mentality is different, the language is different, the food is different. It's really the French part is more obviously French because we're bordering on to France, Germany, Austria, Liechtenstein, and Italy. 
So we're very much influenced by those destinations too, but always with the Swiss touch. So that's what we're trying to say here. But again, like the, the prestige team, amongst them, they have been to different destinations. So use their knowledge because they can tell you what they've experienced and what works best for everyone's types of group. So with that, we're kind of coming to the end very shortly, but there is still stay on it because we have one bonus question and that one will actually give you a price. And although we've been going on about the wine that we can't export, chocolate is always a, be possible to export. So there's chocolate to be won. So, but first the, uh, the added values of Switzerland. What is it that we can offer? So it's really the free transportation card that we have not mentioned that much, because if you have a Swiss pass, this rail ticket, you get free transportation within Switzerland. If you choose to do your program, not with this Swiss pass, but in another way, a lot of destination offer you a free transportation card once you check in in the hotel. So you don't actually have to spend money on transportation. You know, maybe just a couple of price uh, points on, on the pricing as well. We'll go into more details as well. But it's really, yes, yeah, Switzerland is, a, it's not cheap, but it's affordable. You just have to look of how it's all included or not included. For example, again, you have the 500 museums that are free with the Swiss travel pass. The breakfast is very often included in your, well, it's included in your daily delegate rate. So you don't have that on top of it. Then we don't have any resort fees in hotels. Uh, we have the lowest VAT with 7.7% standard rate and 3.8% on accommodation. Uh, we have our own currency, the Swiss franc, and you can see the exchange rate here. And you can also rec reclaim re value added tax that you paid in Switzerland once you leave the country. So yeah, like we said, it's just that we don't just have the plus in our flag, we have a lot of pluses to <laughs> offer too. So here you have our contact details again. I mean, we've just started Instagram, so that we don't have that many posts yet, but they are coming up regularly. It just started like a week or two ago, so you're the first ones to hear about it. We've done a little QR code, so if you want to open your camera, take a picture, follow us on Instagram, please feel free to do so. And uh, email us, but go through Prestige at any time. And now we come to the bonus questions. So... So this don't say anything yet. Don't put anything down yet. We'll give you the, quickly the rules. So basically, our question is, which of the below invention is not Swiss? It's not from Switzerland. Right. So we have like the potato peeler, the zipper, the foil, the fertilizer and the Nespresso capsules. So we're going to count down three to one. And when we do that, the first one that says which one is not uh swiss invention will get a lovely box of swiss premium deluxe chocolate so get ready to hit that button we're going to count down and then we have the prestige team that will see who the first one is so we go three two one which one is not go for it whoa we are getting some fast ones in there but uh, yeah, I can't follow it anymore. So I will let, I think we're we're good. Like it's just the system is obviously not taking everybody quick, but the one that is not, we can give you the answer, is not a Swiss invention, is number four, the fertilizer. So Susan, Susan Peel was the first one to chime in with that. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> like feel free to, you know, send your, Email address coordinate with Prestige and we'll send you the box of chocolate out, which will make it in time for the holidays. So Yay. well done. But, you know, also just to show, you know, very often people think Switzerland is, is very much about tradition. And yes, we have tradition, we have the authenticity and all that. But we're also very modern and we have a lot of innovation, like a lot of things you use every single day is Swiss. So, you know, think of us when you do when you do your, your you know, when you do your pants up, when you cover some food up when you peel your potatoes when you have your coffee there's so many more velcro um geneva the font that you use helvetica the font that you use it's it's all swiss inventions the toblerone you know that looks like the matterhorn anyway get excited about this one again <laughs> so that we have actually come to the end because yes we respect your time so we try to be on the swiss timing we are staying here for 
any questions you may have, please feel free to put them in or you know put them on the on the chat, contact the prestige team. Let us know. But of course, we'd like to thank you all so, so much for taking the time. We do hope that you have enjoyed it, that you have learned something new, but most importantly, that you have been inspired with things that you may not have known. And there is so much more to tell you. You know, if, if one destination doesn't work out, the other one will. If one hotel is not going to be the one, there's another hotel. It's really the variety of not just the locations, but also the activities and everything that you can do around there. So with that in mind, the two of us here <laughs> did not dress up for Christmas, but here we go. We send you a little um, picture <laughs> with our warmest holiday greetings for a happy time with your loved ones. Healthy end of the year, but most importantly, start of the year, and it brings you many good things. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Were there any questions or comments um, about Switzerland from our group? Thanks so much, everyone, for being here. In a quiet group today. This is Carolyn, and I just wanted to say again, it was such an amazing trip to Switzerland, and seeing all the different um, parts of the country was amazing. And we did have the the Swiss travel pass, and it does you could do so much with it. And it's it's just I can't even say enough about this country. I I just highly recommend if if you can get there, get there because it's it's an amazing place. And thank you for a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. And I will echo, I did not get to go on the trip, but I was involved in planning the trip and working with Caroline and Fabia was just amazing. Again, never having been there and having to plan the trip from a distance was so much easier with these ladies on my team. So thank you for that. I will get there eventually. Um, it sure. was wonderful. So and thanks you everyone working with the entire team. You're all fun, fun to work with and very professional. So that's what we love. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you come up with questions later, anyone on the call, please just reach out to um, you can send Amanda an email. She sent you today's reminder for the webinar or you can reach out to your prestige sales contact and they will do everything they can to support you. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thank Happy you. holidays. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.